All right, welcome to the House of Tech podcast, where government meets business, where we discuss the future of technology as well. I'm Fred Chibes, the founder of Finder. I'm Andrew Bragg, Senator for New South Wales, and happy birthday. Oh, I should have kept the hat. I <laughs> know. <No. laughs> well, we've got it here. We've got our great friend here. Oh, let's bring the hat in. All right, we're bringing it in. Here we go. It's the hat episode. <laughs> let's introduce our guest, Andrew. Our good friend here, Justin Hemmers, the CEO of the Maribel Group. Welcome to the House of Tech. Thank you. It's great Thanks to have you on us. here. Thanks for having us. Um, you, you, your family, you really started in, in the fashion and mm. retail business as well. Yeah. Um, business has been, you know, a massive thing for you. We've had a really interesting time, you know, in terms of business right now. Andrew, do you want to start with the first question? Well, I mean, this is a very exciting day for us because yeah. we get to have a chat to Justin, who's running a very significant business here in New South Wales. And one of the most important jobs I have in servicing my constituents is to advocate for the businesses and the people that are investing in our state and employing our people. And Justin does that very well. And so um, I think given we've just had two years of COVID, mm. and everyone is sick of COVID and talking about it, we're not going to dwell too much on that today. Mm. But I did want to open up to you, to you, Justin, and ask about, well, now we're through COVID, we hope. Yep. What are the lessons from that? And how are things now in mm. your businesses? Well, I've been in um, hospitality for 30 years mm. now. Mm. And obviously, when I first started out, I was incredibly um, passionate and excited mm. about the industry. Um, but to go through what we've gone through with COVID for the entire hospitality industry over the last two years mm. um, and come out of it in the shape that we're in now, mm. um, you know, there's been incredible support from the federal government and state government. Um, and I think they've handled the situation incredibly well. Mm. Now, coming out of it, I'm, I've never been more excited about the industry. Mm. I think we are going to come back stronger than ever. And what COVID has done, it's brought out our innate passion and desire to connect mm. socially mm. and to connect face to face mm. and over food and, and wine mm. and alcohol and partying and dancing. Mm. So I think we're gonna come back stronger because that's been, that desire has been suppressed for mm. two years. So we're gonna come back stronger than ever. And I've actually seen it in the last two weeks and also the previous um, mm -hmm. non-lockdown period. Mm -hmm. the enthusiasm and the excitement from the customer to be back and to be in our spaces and for the staff, they were so excited to have the guests back. So there's yeah. this renewed passion and excitement for the industry from both the customer and the staff. So I think we've got incredible times ahead. Um, we've got all the stakeholders, um, council, state government, federal government, mm. police, everybody's on the same page. Mm. So we have a fantastic opportunity to rewrite the books of hospitality. And I think if we do things right, we're gonna have the experience, the roaring 2020s. Mm. You, your, your venues have all of a distinct brand and, and, and they all have a, an edge and a feel to them. Tell us about what's important for you when you're, you're making a, uh, a brand. There's a lot of, lot of people who are listening to this obviously are creating businesses, they're starting businesses right now. It's an exciting time. I mean, creating a yeah. brand is a really hard thing to do. Tell us some of the thoughts you go through in, in that. Um, well, you know, I think a feeling um, is brought about by a number of things. And that's what our business is. It's all about experience. So the experience is the look and feel of the, of the venue. Now that comes from, we, my sister and I work very closely on all design. Um, and every project that we do, we're heavily involved, the two of us. And we have another lady, Amanda, who works on every project with us. And then we have a handful of architects. There's sort of three key architectural firms that we work with. And we work with the same people within that firm for every project. So it's coming from us. You know, we're heavily involved. It's our style and our taste and our concepts. And we work with the same people. So there's always going to be that similar feel mm -hmm. in terms of design and um, aesthetic. Um, and then you, that experience comes from the, f the quality of product. Mm -hmm and the service. And our staff are um, very passionate about the business and they're very engaged and they're very um, supportive and they're like-minded. Mm -hmm. And they're incredibly passionate about our business and serving the customer. So the staff make the venue, we just deliver, we deliver the space and great product, 
great service and great atmosphere. So it's one philosophy for all venues, but every venue is different. You know, mm. every venue has a different concept, mm. a different design, mm. a different um, pr um, product of food, different drinks, etc. But it's all encompassed by that one feeling of great service in a great atmosphere with wonderful staff. Yeah. So what is going to hold you back then? I mean, you've set the scene. Everything's looking pretty good. It's exciting. What are the things that are holding your business back and the economy back right now, do you think? Well, great question, because there's obviously an incredible um, staff shortage yeah. across the industry. Um, you know, COVID has been incredibly hard on um, staff in the hospitality industry because of... Can you give us some examples? Mm. Well, lack of security of job... Uh, well, job security mm. under threat by mm. lockdowns, mm. you know. Mm. So other industries, tech industries, et cetera, ah. have been booming. So if you know, hospitality staff are not just people that stand in front of the customer and serve, we also have you know, big head office mm. operations. There's accountants, there's marketing people, there's mm. graphic designers. And if your job is you know, threatened by COVID, then you've got, they've got mortgages to pay, they've got families to feed. So it's easy to jump to jump ship to an industry that's less affected. Yep. So that's been a big challenge for us to keep our people mm. um, and make them feel secure over the last two, two years. And we've done, you know, we banded together to really work as one and look after our people and identify people that were out on a limb and needed further assistance. So we set up a lot of programs over the last two years to support our people. So we've come through and I think we're more united and stronger than ever. So have you lost people that you would regard as high performers, important to your business, to other industries that will never come back? Um, I think, I don't think they were, I don't think there's a situation where they won't come back because yeah. I think we're now going to move into an in, the in, hospitality industry. It's going to be one of the most exciting industries to mm. work in. Mm. Mm. You know, it, it is, this is an inflection point in time mm. where the hospitality industry is going to be the most exciting, I think, industry and tech, mm. but to be in. And more exciting than it's ever been. Mm. So people will come back, but we have a huge shortage of um, um, talent in, at a very senior level because we rely on overseas talent heavily. Mm. And actual businesses, some of my businesses are completely built around one or two people that we've brought from overseas. Mm. So I might get an incredible like chef. cooks, yeah? Yeah, chef. A chef, yeah, for yeah, instance. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So Danielle Alvarez, mm. I got her from San, Fr San Francisco, mm. brought in, and she's such an acclaimed and well-renowned um, chef mm. that it makes people want to come and learn and work with her. Mm. So that one person, she now employs 150 people, mm. Australians, mm. who want to work and learn from her and be part of that business. So we create businesses around talent as well. And without that talent coming in, then those businesses don't exist. So we need um, professional chef talent, sommeliers, etc. even managers. You know, you get an amazing talented manager from overseas. Mm. People want to work for them, you know, and learn from them. They, those, that talent, that's our TAFE. They're our, that's our hospitality universities because there's nothing better than learning from someone who's so experienced. So we need to get those people in and we need to attract them and welcome them with open arms. Now, this is the first time, I think, since World War II mm. that we have this incredible opportunity to say, come and live in this country, mm -hmm. come and contribute to our economy and come and contribute to our industry. We need to open the doors and open our arms and welcome these people in mm. with a, a path for permanent residency. So they do bring their families mm. and they do come and contribute to our economy. So there's those people mm. that we build businesses on and then we need um, unskilled workers as well. So the guys and girls that are happy to, you know, be in the kitchens and peeling potatoes and cutting onions and dicing tomato, uh, you know, dicing tomatoes and, and cooking and being on the front line cooking because it's very hard to fill those jobs with Australians. Mm. Now we've got a fantastic, you know, there was always a stigma in the past about visa workers taking the jobs of Australians. Mm. Well, I think we've just had the most perfect case study, <laughs> a real case study, and it shows that visa workers aren't taking the jobs of yeah. Australians. We need those people as well. So mm. we've got, <coughs> we've got 4,000 staff working for us now. I could do with 5,000 tomorrow. 
And if I have an extra thousand staff, which generally that would extra a thousand would be visa workers. Mm. So normally we would have about a thousand visa workers, and we've got two hundred. Mm. So we need more visa workers, and that means we can go from working doing five days, five um, lunches and dinners to seven. So the industry is held back, the economy is held back because we can get another thirty percent out of operations if we had more workers coming in. Mm. So it's really important to the industry because we rely we rely on those people heavily both for skilled and unskilled and they need pa- you know pr avenues mm. because they're bringing their life here of course. they're bringing their families they want to set up and we need more people mm. Mm. well i mean i'll let you ask the next question but th- this is uh, one of the many myths we have to fight in public policy in australia mm. and that is that foreign investment is bad and foreign people are bad i mean australia would be dead without foreign investment and foreign people. Mm -hmm. Um, And we've always been competing for the best brains, Mm -hmm. the best skills, and and frankly, the most uh, foreign investment that we can get because we don't have enough people um, or enough capital to run our economy. And we should be enticing them in. Yes. Mm. Absolutely, because that's how we improve. To Mm. keep improving your standards, you keep bringing in talent, we learn from them and we continue to build and improve. That's Mm. That's how an economy builds, isn't it? Correct. You talk, Justin, about the future of hospitality and how things have changed. And um, I, I, you know, I agree with your thesis. I think everyone does that. You know, people want to connect it right now, and they want and a great way to connect is over a meal or in person and, and talk face to face. It's we've all been wanting that. Um, but can you talk us tell us about what you think is important and what what things are needed for that future to be realised? Like, what are some of the things? That you, then t- and describe this vision of what you see coming up in sort of, you know, the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you know, the hospitality industry for me and what COVID has shown is that that face-to-face, face-to-face connection will never die. And people want mm. to be served by staff. You know, they want to f- sit down, for a restaurant for instance, you want to sit down, relax and let them recommend the best things to eat or what to drink and have that social connection. Now, I, for me, technology is so important to the industry, but it needs to be a facilitator mm-hmm. and help us serve the guest as best we possibly can so that we know what our guests like and break down any friction points, for instance, payment. Mm-hmm. You know, the last, the thing, the, the worst thing in a restaurant, you've had a fantastic meal. Mm-hmm. And then that last, those last few minutes when you want to get the bill. Yep. And if you're waiting five minutes mm. to get their attention to get the bill, it can ruin your entire meal. So <laughs> how do we fix those points? Oh, you've got to get Sorry. to a meeting. You're yeah, like, yeah. God, oh, I've got to go. go. And then, you know, and it's gone from I had the best meal to, God, I hate it. It's such a bad experience, yeah. you know? Massive such anxiety. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. breaking down and how do we fix those tension points <laughs> with technology? Mm. To me, is is the greatest part that technology can play in our industry, because what I never want to do is take away that magic. connection, that magic, meeting people, meeting people at the bar, meeting your future wife, meeting your future husband, mm. meeting you know th- those things are so exciting. You don't want to take away from that. So, technology plays a very important part um, in the industry. Um, you know, when there's some great innovations like me and you which serve a fantastic purpose because they suit, if we have a big beer garden and you know, you, you, you've got to go all the way over there to get a drink, if you're engaged with the people you're at the table with, you can get on order online and the food drinks come to you. So you have that choice. So you can have that separation with the server or you can have that connection. Mm-hmm. So what COVID has done, I think it's fast tracked some of those these wonderful um, systems like me and you and it's fast track them because it suits a purpose and people want that so how do we use technology to improve the experience and give you choice as well mm. it's really important so and what else can government do do you think to support hospitality getting back on its feet i mean the, i hear you about the labor laws and the and the shortages of labor but is there something else that we could do that is a lesson from the pandemic or well I, as i said before i think both federal and state governments have done an incredible job under the circumstances. Mm. I mean, um, you know, we've, we've had a hopefully once in a lifetime pandemic, hopefully. Let's see, yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, our industry in particularly New South Wales mm. has survived it as best possible. Um, I think the, 
you know, the limited lockdowns. Lockdowns, obviously, are the, uh, the hardest thing for us because it's mm. zero income. Yeah, it's the end, yeah. And yes, we can mobilize and change our business model, but, you know, we want to keep all, all the staff employed. Mm. So the government, I mean, JobKeeper, I think, was um, one of the most fantastic incentives the government could have done. And it kept our staff employed by us, mm. not standing in a line to pick up a, 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 you know, a payment. They were still employed. So psychologically, I think that played such an important role in the success and the reason why we are in such a strong position now. To bounce so, back, yeah. It was a very liberal solution. The yeah. support was incredible and it kept people engaged, it kept them employed. It meant they had cash in their hand and they were spending it. Mm. So it kept the economy turning. Mm. And if that hadn't have happened, we would have come to a grinding halt, grinding mm. halt, and we would be having a very different discussion today. Mm. Um, the right. state government has been fantastic. New South Wales state government has been incredible. Mm. The support to businesses, the support to the industry, to keep things moving, to keep the economy going, has been exceptional. So, you know, I think the, a pandemic is such a unique um, situation for hospitality because it is yeah. connection. You know, so I think under the circumstances. Couldn't have done a better job. Okay. Mm. Wow. What an experience. It's a really tough experience. Obviously, this has been probably the biggest shakeup I could imagine for your business. Um, what sort of are some of the new sort of resiliences or, or new opportunities you see? What's like, you know, brand new that maybe maybe that's probably coming? Like, what have you got on your roadmap coming up? What's, what's, what's interesting? Well, it's... It sounds a bit boring, but more of the same. B-A-U. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is. But I'm actually more enthusiastic, as I mentioned this before, more enthusiastic about the industry than ever. Mm. And I realize that, you know, this horrible world pandemic can't destroy hmm. hospitality. And we will come back stronger than ever. Um, renewed passion and desire by people to dance. Mm. And, you know, it's quite amazing to see we've opened up our clubs again and we've got um, some very large clubs that hold, you know, 3,000 people at a time. Mm. And these have come back stronger than ever. And interesting to see is that pre-pandemic, you know, mm. when you'd look at the club from, a, I can see this dance floor in the main areas from above, you would see a dance floor, people dancing, people standing around the bar chatting and talking and people, you know, lounging and that. Now you look down, everybody's dancing everybody's dancing so it's like a festival so it's like everyone's come back and as soon as they come in they're straight on to they're d dancing straight away so i've never seen that in 30 years so <laughs> there's this pent-up excitement to connect through dancing and expression mm. so people are expressing themselves in a different way and there's a wonderful vibe around there's no tension amongst people people were loving each other more than ever before mm. so i think we're going to come out better for mm. it um, shame you have to go through that to experience yeah, sorry about that. but it's yeah. like a big reset button mm. on society and i see it in our venues are you a good dancer friend um you don't need to be because everyone's Sound dancing good. like solidly <laughs> like solidly awkward yeah okay yeah. Justin might keep me on the floor a little bit. I reckon. I'm, my money's on him. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, but if you have the hat, shocking. I think you get special points. Well, you know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hat dancer. Are you? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, one of the things we do with this podcast is we, you know, try and talk about some other things. Mm. Now, Fred is, I call him Mr. Serious because he's always <laughs> trying to, you know, he, he wants me to just to focus on the books and the words, and but I'm a bit more well, you know, colourful than, you know, very, people yeah, yeah, very colourful. So, we have this thing about trying to decipher what uh, strange things from America are. Yeah. And um, uh, you've just come back from America, so I think you might have the inside word on this. But we're trying to get a sense of what are home fries? <laughs> I have no idea. You don't know? Mm -mm. Potato? Potatoes and they're fried up, apparently. Yeah. Home you, fries. You know when you go mm. into a, an American diner? I know what fry, they, animal style. And they say, here are, here are some yeah, home it's fries. It's not what you're thinking. It's no. the, yeah, home in fries. and out animal the, style. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you, so you don't know? Home fries. I thought you would well, know. I imagine it's just French fries, isn't it? I think so. But why are they called home fries? Well, it's, 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 it's fascinating. It's, I would, Probably I would because they came up with it. Really? No one's asking for home fries here in Australia? Not yet. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. I have another question on that. Um, in America, um, there's um, obviously a lot of trends of food that continuously come and go, you know, pop-up shops and 
those kind of things. Yeah. How do you do, do you experiment with things like that? Do you take trends in your menus um, from overseas? Well, I'm not really into trends. Mm. You know, I think food has been around since the beginning of mankind. Mm. And, you know, there are certain things that just aren't broken and don't need tampering with. Mm. Um, but I would say Australia's in a very unique position because we have so many cultural influences here. Mm. You know, we're so close to Asia. Mm. So we have all those incredible different parts of Asia and Southeast Asia and, and influences from all those incredible cultures that really their food is extraordinary yeah, and all the spices and the herbs and spices that America doesn't really get that influence. That's true. And we also have all the influence from everywhere in Europe as well. You know, so we have, you know, all, all the Arabic influences and the Italian and French. So we have such an incredible mixing pot and melting pot here of different food cultures and so we have fantastic representations of all those styles of food in this country now that's very very rare you know there aren't many countries in the world that can say they have such a diverse offering at such a high quality so i think you know at the food scene in australia um, is one of the best in the world because of that mix and the diversity of offerings and the cultural cultural mix within our country which goes back to you know what, what what our country is is building on and and how we develop and continue to grow is by inviting those cultures into our country and su mm. supporting them to support us mm. i mean I, I grew up in northern victoria and the most diverse cuisine you could find there would be the local chinese shop yeah. um but you know you walk around sydney today sure, and you sure. can yeah you can you can and that's an obvious point to make but um, I, I would say that when you go to the States, so you still get some pretty good tucker there. I mean, and I'm always struck with how fresh the food would look mm. um, as well. I mean, my sense is that the food is still quite good um, and the portions are massive. They What's the go with, with that? They struggle with um, produce, quality of produce. Do they? Yeah, very okay. much so. Because a lot of it has to be flown in. Whereas Australia, we have some of the best produce here on our doorstep. Mm. Um, seafood, um, beef. Mm. Um, um, all the vegetables and, and herbs and we, we grow a lot of that here um, so we certainly have the advantage of, of um, uh, the produce and the freshness of produce and the quality of it and yeah. they, they do struggle with that America mm. so where do they get their produce from well they have to they ship it in from all around the world hmm. what's been obviously in the supply chain challenges what's yeah. been hard to get and what's been relatively okay price of protein has, has gone through the roof um, so obviously with all the challenges see even the the um, w workforce in mm. the supply chain has been such a such a huge impact on pricing mm. so it's pushing prices through the roof um, I think it's just that a shortage of staff across across the entire nation mm. um, particularly in hospitality has really put a lot of pressure on pricing mm. Mm. Do you have a preferred cuisine? I love everything. That's not an answer. Mm. I know, but it depends on the day. Oh, I'll tell you mine then. I, I'd probably be, be Japanese or Greek. That'd be my. What about you? I love I love a good I love French food. Do you? I do like French food. That's why I was going oh, really? to Felix tonight. Yeah, yeah, you're going to Felix. I'm going to Felix tonight, on my birthday. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good. I've got joy. to ask. That's a good joy. So he's 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 he's. He is, 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 <laughs> didn't is, answer the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I probably. <laughs> I'd say my my death row meal would have to be an Asian influenced um, meal. Mm. Okay. It's still an, Asian spices and. I, I mean, you could be a poly with an answer like, like that. That's a very broad answer because it could be. Mm. Uh, you think I could be a politician? It could be a Sri Lankan curry. It could be uh, Japanese sashimi. Mm. It's Indian. a lot of... Uh, it could be Indian, yeah. What, um, um, we have a question we ask everyone. Um, so wanted to ask you, mm. um, if you had an opportunity to travel to space right now, would you go? Mm, no. Why is that? Well, I love it here. <laughs> And there's no totties up there either. <laughs> <laughs> Yet. And, no, and Yet. No, no beautiful water to swim in. Yeah. yeah. Well, our last guest has been offered to go, um, and he also declined it. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Would you go? I'd go. You, you would go? I'd go on the first. I'd do anything to go. Yeah, I don't think... Really? I don't yeah. think that yeah. you wouldn't be able to wear the hat. They'd have to... they change that, the hat? That could put a hole in the space suit. Get a different hat? No, we would put a hole in the space suit. Uh. If I had another hat, I'd be all right. It's so good here. Why would you want to... Just to see something. Yeah, you want to see 
You probably see nothing actually. Yeah. You just see the the world. Then. Hmm. I think it, I think it would it would give you a perspective that when you came back, you would see the world slightly differently. Yeah, and that then you would appreciate and be grateful for what there is as well. Mm. And you take things away. And I think I felt that I was I was recently in New York for four months, and it was you, know, you talk it was very challenging. And hospitality was you know they have the outdoor seating now, yeah. which I think is quite nice and innovative. You know people want to sit outside now in New York, which is new. You've still got the indoor and outdoor, so there's sort of an innovation, and that that really was facilitated by the government there locally as well, which mm. is quite interesting. You government know, is which good. Is same, well. same is happening here too, mm. yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and I think I think the um, the thing I learned, but from that was it was it was a very different new york and, and every, obviously every city i've been to uh, but particularly different and it actually removed a lot of things from that city which 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 you know really baked that culture like you talked yeah. about and people weren't meeting as much in person mm. you would you'd be in the same city and yet still meet digitally oh, is it? Right. which is which is you know unusual but i did notice you know obviously um delivery had gone through the roof you could get almost anything delivered yeah um although again it took that element of what you talk about is that person-to-person connection mm. and I, and maybe that's why you know space doesn't seem like a, a place where you know <laughs> sort of goes against <laughs> everything. a couple of people <laughs> yeah we'd have a meal every night <laughs> yeah. together yeah 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 well, andrew would be well, funny actually that well one. you could yeah. be you could go could to the good. international space center there's a few people there there might yeah. be four or five yeah um if you went to the moon i don't think there's that many people that have been there um, I don't think the Russians went to the moon at, at any point, but there have been maybe se- only seven or eight Americans have been there. Anyway, we, we digress a lot on this show, so we won't we don't want to detain you any longer. But um, I did want to say, um, I mean, Fred's described New York without sort of you know people and without pizzazz. Yeah. Uh, I don't think many people could have imagined Sydney um, without your enterprises, and I think you you do a great service for our our state and our people. Uh, by providing those services. Um, and I think whether you're a dancer or not, I think people uh, are very grateful to have you know, your your dedication to those magnificent <laughs> venues. So, Well, it's, um, it's wonderful to see, um, particularly this week, mm. um, people back in the city walking around because for two years, mm. with the exception of the, the, the period that we weren't locked down, yeah. you know, I was going into the office every day. Mm. and It's like Canberra. A ghost town. Yeah, like I Canberra. I yeah. would not see a mm. human. And it was, it was horrifying. Mm. I mean, it was, I, I can't explain the feeling to walk into our city and a city that I'm so passionate about mm. and love so much and to not see mm. a human walking the street mm. was horrifying. Mm-hmm. And to see it back now and people have a, a skip in their stride, despite the weather, they still have, you know, they're still happy to be back. Yeah, out how much longer is it going to rain for, do you think? I can't, don't have control over that. Okay. Mm. Well, I like that. This but it's great to see people I like to back ask out. the probing questions because Fred's a bit of a softy, you know. Mm. Very, he's a serious softy. I can see that. He's a serious, <laughs> serious softy. A wilting flower. Yeah, yeah, you, you've got to probe people. I'll work a bit better. I'll work it's a bit like on standard it. estimates, only I'm on the other side of the I'm, table. I'm a work in progress. I'm still no, in I'm beta still mode. I'm still on the same side. I'm still asking the questions. Yeah, I've got to try and keep up. There we go. Yeah. Oh, um, thank you so much, Justin, for joining us on the House of Tech. And, you know, like Andrew, I, I want to, if I can, try and add is... I don't think Sydney would be Sydney without, you know, your business and what you contribute. Oh, it just wouldn't be Sydney. Hmm. Um, it would be somewhere bad like Adelaide. No, Adelaide's all no, right. Adelaide's got a fantastic. No, Adelaide's all right. I don't mind. It. Actually, I'm not against Adelaide. I used to be, but now I'm okay. I, I love all of Australia. <laughs> yeah. Do you? Um, it's great. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um, and so um, we wanted to thank you as well for that, and um, that's going to wrap us up here. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, And for everyone else, obviously, you can grab the show notes at finder.com.au slash house of tech. Check those out. Um, We'll put some links on there um, for obviously, you know, join, obviously have a look at the Marriott group and all the Mm. incredible restaurants and bars and um, venues there. Check those out. Um, And um, we won't be seeing you in space. Not anytime soon.